early 1900s, a young German artist was just getting his start. George Gross took a weekly drawing class under the instruction of a local artist. In the time he spent outside of class, he trained himself to paint in a capacity greater than what his teacher could ever train him. Gross later began studying at the Dresden Academy of Fine Arts as well as the Berlin College of Arts and Crafts. Through his studies, he developed an infatuation with America, which was one of the leading factors that contributed to his decision to change his name. Inspired by his love for America and his detest for German nationalism, he changed the spelling of his name in 1916. This represented a change from a German name to a more Americanized name as tribute to the country and ideology he loved so much. He spent a brief time in the military, but was discharged in 1918 after being deemed unfit to remain in service, mainly due to his socially unaccepted and radical behavior. This behavior did not change after his return, which leads us into the exploration of the satirical artistic style of George Gross and the argument that Gross is an influential and important figure whose art presents critical examples of cultural rebellion. One of his most popular works, titled Metropolis, displays the artist's negative view of his surroundings at the time. Metropolis by George Gross presents rebellious and important ideas that were influential during the artist's time and that are also influential today. The first and most noticeable aspect of this painting is the shades of red that dominate the color structure. Gross uses almost completely warm colors in his construction, contrasting against these reds with the complementary colors on the cold color spectrum. The scene is set at night, probably during some end of work commute by the daily workers of the city to return home for the evening. Due to the time Gross served in the military during World War I, he had lost most of his faith not only in Germany but in mankind. He had turned into a misanthrope, a person who doesn't believe in the goodness of people, and he let this show through his new works. The red shades in Metropolis represent Gross's anger towards the disconnect between the leaders and the common people of Germany, and how both groups have the innate tendency towards human quest for power. The painting is divided into two planes by the use of the lamp in the middle, meant to direct the viewer to the motion of each part. This is further muddled by the direction of the artwork's lines, which split off in many different directions and catch the viewer's eye in endless ways. Most of the lines and objects in the painting are straight and angular, further constructing the theme of anger and frustration that Gross has towards the present moment. The movement of the crowd itself cannot be limited to two directions, as the point of view starts at the base of the lamp pole and carries out to all four corners of the painting in some way. The people in the painting are traveling in a chaotic manner, representing the futility of the world and to gross, the unstable and corrupt lifestyle manifested in big cities. The people are jumbled together on the bottom plane of the painting while the large buildings rule the upper portion, suggesting that people are always struggling to achieve greatness but forever left on the bottom. Overall, this piece is an obvious criticism on what Gross viewed as the crumbling decay of German society, something that can be seen throughout his Weimar-era drawings and paintings. Considering his rebellious artistic style and negative interpretation of German society, the Nazi regime targeted Gross and his artwork. He was open about his negative feelings towards German officials, which in turn made them even more aggravated by his work. Ironically, Gross denounced Nazi Germans as degenerate themselves, along with an overarching view of Germans as an ugly people both inside and out. In 1937, Metropolis was included in the Entartete Kunst, or Degenerate Art, exhibit. The artwork was then sold at a German gallery, with the money going towards the rearmament of Germany's military. The man who purchased the piece immigrated to New York and started a gallery of his own. Gross moved to America shortly after this occurred, stabilized his financial situation, and bought his painting back from the gallery owner. Metropolis was owned by the Richard L. Feigen Gallery for a short time and is currently on display as a part of the Thyssen Bornemisza collection in Madrid, Spain. In a time where many people and artists were afraid to express how they truly felt about the changing world around them, George Gross took control of his anger and used it to create outstanding works of art still respected today. Had he given into the scare tactics of Nazi Germany, he would never have gotten his message out to the millions of people that have viewed Metropolis. This artwork reveals to us what went against the typical German standard at the time, as well as displaying the values of Dadaism. 
His color, balance, and line work in Metropolis were shocking for his time and caused the Nazis to brand his artwork degenerate and to steal and sometimes destroy it. Without this example to continue to encourage and enlighten thousands of people around the world, mankind would lose a part of our insight into cultural rebellion and its significance throughout time.